Hi, welcome to another video in my series on centers of mass. And in this video, what we're going to look at is how we find the center of mass of a uniform lambda where it's made up of several other lambdas. In this example, we've got, say, two rectangles joined together. So how do we find out the center of mass of something like this? Well, what we do is we divide it up into familiar shapes. So, as I said earlier, two rectangles would be appropriate. And how we do that is up to you. You can draw a dotted line across here and look at this rectangle up here, and then this rectangle here. I'm not going to do that, not that it really matters. You could try this example again after I've done it and uh, try it a different way. See if you get exactly the same result. You should do, obviously. But if we divide it into two rectangles like this, let's call this point here F, then when we go about trying to find the center of mass of this, what we need to do is set up a set of axes. And it's up to you where you place the axes, but quite often a good place to do it is on the outer edge of the lamina. So in other words, I'd have an x-axis along here, Let's just mark that in as X, and we'll have a Y axis going up this edge OA. Now, what we do is we look at where the center of mass would be for each of the shapes that we're considering. In this case, two rectangles. So for the rectangle OABF, the center of mass would be in the middle here. And the same would apply to the rectangle FCDE, somewhere here. Now, when it comes to the coordinates of these points, let's mark those in. This centre of mass would be at one and a half units in because its width here is three centimetres, so it will have an x coordinate of 1.5, and the y coordinate will be halfway up this side of six centimeters, so it'd be three units up. When it comes to the center of mass of the rectangle FCDE, then we know that this length CD has to be five centimeters because we've got eight centimeters across here, O to E, and three centimeters A to B. So that's going to be five centimeters. So the distance in from the dotted line here will be two and a half units. But from the y-axis, because that's three, we got three plus two and a half, so that's going to be five and a half, five point five. Then, as for the y-coordinate, well, that's going to be half of the two up here, so that would be one. Now we've got to get the masses of these rectangles, so we can work that out because we know that or we're assuming that the mass is uniform, okay, evenly distributed over the area. So what we'll assume is that we'll let the mass per unit area equal some constant. Up to you what constant you use, but I'm going to say it's equal to m units. So when it comes to the mass here of the rectangle OABF, then we can say, well, its area is 6 times 3, that's 18 centimetre squares, but then we need to multiply it by this constant m. So its mass is 18 m units. Similarly, for this rectangle, FCDE, its area is going to be 5 times 2, 10 centimetre squares, but for every unit of area, it's going to be have a mass of m, so it's going to be 10m. So what we've done is we've reduced this to a system of two particles, if you like, of masses 18m and 10m. So it's just like what we did earlier when we were trying to find the center of mass for a system of particles. Now, if you're not familiar with this, just go back to an earlier video which you'll find on my website, which talks about how we go about finding the center of mass for a system of particles in a plane. So if we mark in where we think the center of mass will be, I would say, at a guess, it might be somewhere up here. But 
We'll mark that in as having coordinates x bar, y bar in the usual way. And the mass here will be the total of 18m and 10m, a total mass then of 28m. Let's just mark it in over here. 28m then is that mass. So all we need to do now is just form an equation which takes the moments about the x and y axis. So it will be the total mass, 28m, multiplied by x bar, y bar, which we'll write as a column vector, equals the moment of these individual masses. So it'll be 18m multiplied by 1.53 1.53 plus the moment from this mass here of 10m it will be plus 10m multiplied by 5.51 5.51 so we'll notice the m's cancel they're in every term so we might as well take those out and we therefore have 28 x bar y bar equals and if we multiply this top line out 18 times 1.5 plus 10 times 5.5 comes to a total of 82 and then we've got 18 times 3 plus 10 times 1 and that comes to 64 so if we divide both 82 and 64 by 28, that's going to leave us with x bar, y bar. So if you do 82 divided by 28, you'll find you get 2.928 and so on. And if you divide 64 by 28, you get 2.285 and so on. Well, let's just round these up. So if we wrote it as a coordinate, x bar, y bar, if we wrote it as a coordinate giving our answer say to one decimal place, then we'd have x bar is 2.9 and y bar is 2.3. Both those two, one decimal place. And just check out to see whether that looks sensible. 2.9 units, it's just short of the dotted line here and 2.3 units up. So as a guess that was reasonably good. Okay, well I've got another example that you might like to try give you a bit more practice. And here it is. We've got this uniform lambda here. So just try and uh, have a go at this, pause the video, come back when ready and uh, check your work solution with mine. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Now there's various ways that you could divide this lambda up into rectangles. This might not be the way that you've done it, but I would select to draw say a dotted line across there and one across here, so we've got our three rectangles. I'd also need to put in some axes, so I'd have my x-axis running along here just label that X and then we've got the Y axis up here we'll label that Y. We next need to locate the center of mass of each of these rectangles and it's going to obviously be in the middle of each so we'll just put some dots there. We need to get the coordinates of these centers of mass. So if we start with say this one here we can see that the length is 4 centimeters. so if we go halfway in then it's going to have a x coordinate of 2 units and the width here is 2 centimeters. so obviously if we go up we're going to go up just half of that 1 unit so coordinate of that one is 2, 1. Similarly for this one we've got a length here which is 10 centimeters. the 4 plus the 6, so halfway in is going to be 5 units, so just put that as 5. As for 
the distance up from the x-axis where you've got the 2 here and then you've got half of the 1 so it's going to be 2.5 and finally for this one we've got a width here of 6 centimeters so we've got to come in 3 units so that's going to be 3 there for the x value and coming up from the x-axis here the y coordinate will be the 2 plus the 1 plus half of 5 another 2.5 so you're going to come up to 5.5 so your coordinate there is 3 5.5 now we need to write on the masses of each of these rectangles so if we were to say let the mass per unit area equals some constant let's say we call it M All right. then when it comes to the various masses this one up here 6 times 5 is the area 6 5 is 30 then we've got 30M for this one we've got 10 times the 1 so that's 10M for that mass and for this one 4 times 2 is 8 multiply it by M and you've got 8M so that part's done now we need to put on our center of mass now it's going to act at a guess somewhere between these individual masses so I'm just going to put it say about here coordinates then will be X bar Y bar and that total mass acting through this point will be the total of 30m, 10m and 8m so that's going to be 48m now that we've done that we just need to take moments about the x and y axis so if we form the equation it's going to be the total mass 48m multiplied by x bar y bar so that would be the moment about the x and y axis and then that's going to equal the sum of the moments of each of these individual particles about the axis so if we start with this one here the 30m we've got 30m multiplied by 3 and 5.5 so 3 5.5 then we've got plus let's take the 10m next 10m multiplied by 5 and 2.5 5 2.5 and then finally plus the 8m multiplied by 2 1 so 8m multiplied by the column vector 2 1 now the m's cancel they're in every term so we can take those out and then what we're left with is therefore 48 x bar y bar equals now if you multiply all of these out I'll leave it up to you just to check it but you should find that if you do 30 times 3 plus 10 times 5 plus 8 times 2 you're going to get 156 and then if you do 30 times 5.5 10 times 2.5 and 8 times 1 and add those together you end up with 198 and if you now divide each of these values by the 48 you get x bar y bar turning out to be exactly 3.25 and 4.125 so that gives you your column vector then you could write it as a coordinate x bar y bar equals 3.25 then and 4.125 okay well I hope that's given you some idea then how to go about finding the center of mass then when we've got a composite lamina in these examples we were just dealing with rectangles but in further examples we could have other shapes like uh, circles triangles but I'll run through those in a later tutorial Okay, well that brings us to the end of this one.